In this video, I'm going to tell you five reasons why you can build pretty much any app out there using a no code tool like Bubble and other similar tools as well. Now, when I started out, I was skeptical about these tools. I was like, do these tools actually work? Can I actually build a real app using these tools? Are they limited in some ways? Because let's face it, when you are sitting down and writing code you can build pretty much any kind of app that you want you have the flexibility you have the capability you have the ability to go out and to build any kind of app if you want to build an, uh, a web app you can build it using freely available tools if you want to build an ios app you can build it but it's not only the platform you can actually do you can actually make the app do exactly what you want and that's really what what you know development is all about instead of buying something instead of you know building a website that kind of sort of does what you wanted to do you can actually go out and build an app and so when i started looking at these tools later on because i come from a tech background i was very very skeptical i was like can these tools actually do exactly what you want or are these glorified you know kind of these uh like like website generators or anything like that and actually, after some time and some experience, I came to realize that these tools are very, very capable and they can build pretty much anything that you need. Or at least, you know, 95% of the cases of the situations you're going to be facing, you don't really need to code. You can go out, you can use a tool like Bubble, and you can get it to do exactly what you want. And so I'm going to tell you five reasons that that is so, okay? So the first reason is the ui designer okay you can go out and you can model the app that you want exactly how you want it and that's because we have a very very rich ui designer look at this you have these visual elements here you have text buttons you have links images you have all these visual elements you have containers and i have to say that uh containers such as this repeating group is is amazing because as far as I know, there's nothing like this uh, when you're building a WordPress site or plugins and things like that. There's nothing, at least nothing that I know that could be done as easily when you're building a repeating group and you can pull data, uh, whether it's data stored locally or from an external source. And that is something I'm going to get to in a second. And so you have uh, these read-only elements, elements that show something but don't, but don't uh, capture the data. And then you have these containers, and then you have these input forms, and then you have reusable elements. So combined with all of this, you can pretty much make a UI that does exactly what you want it to do. And this is uh, kind of a pain even, right? Because when we're talking about development, this is not even development. This is mostly, you know, HTML, CSS stuff. This is separate. And that is another skill that you have to master. And this makes it a lot easier because all I have to do is drag and drop. If I want to drag and drop a text field, I just drag and drop, I modify it here, I get it to do exactly what I want it to do, as simple as that. And so when it comes to designing all kinds of interfaces, you can pretty much do exactly what you can do if you're doing it manually, okay? The second reason is actually one of the most important reasons, and that is the workflow, okay? When you're talking about apps, you're building apps, it's all about a workflow. It's not really about designing anything because... At the end of the day, if I design something, but it's not doing anything, then what's the point of it? It's not an app. I'm, I just I just essentially design. I just, you know, did some graphic design or UI design, but it's not doing anything. And what makes a tool like this, a no-code tool like Bubble, very powerful is the existence of workflows. And so what is a workflow? It's very, very simple. It's logic, okay? It's like, when this happens, do this. If this, then that. Very, very simple. It's all logic. And you can attach these workflows to pretty much any kind of event. So if I have a button here, here, so let, let me drag a button just to show you what I mean. So if I drag a button here and this button, let's say I, I have a, a table here and I need to add a new element. So, okay. And so when I, when I drag a button, I can just click on it and I'm going to have this property area here and I can start a workflow. And right away, I have various actions that can happen. I can, you know, sign, I can, you know, this is account management. I can sign the user. I can do navigation. I can um, manipulate the data. I can, you know, email payments. And then there's the plugins, which includes third-party stuff, which is something I'm going to get to in a second. Custom events. I can trigger a custom events. So any kind of workflow, any kind of events, whether it's happening inside the app 
or caused by some external event, you know, using a REST API call or some kind of external trigger, you can do it using the very, very powerful workflows. And so in my opinion, when I discovered workflows and I realized the scope, that this very wide scope of things that you can do with it, I realized that you can pretty much do anything inside of this app. When it comes to logic, when it comes to if, then, else kind of situations, you can model it using the powerful workflows, okay? The third point is the REST APIs, okay? So if you go into plugins, I have this plugin here called the API Connector, and you, you by default, you don't have this plugin. You have to install it, and you can just add plugins, and you can type API, and you're gonna find this plugin here. This is the first plugin, typically, is the API Connector. It's by Bubble. I have it installed, and what this allows you to do is it allows you to send and receive API calls, and this is extremely, extremely powerful. So if you go to this API connector, I have a bunch of APIs. I have a sports API, I have Appify, I have eBay. I have a bunch of different APIs that I'm working with, and that allows me to get data from a source, also post data, modify it. And so if I am working in a situation where the data I'm storing is not locally, I need to access external data, but not only access external data, I actually need to modify it. I actually need to you know, create new data, update data, do all kinds of things. And this is great whenever you are using a tool like Bubble as a UI, as some kind of an interface. So let's say you have a WordPress site on one hand, and then you wanna create a UI interface in Bubble, and this UI interface in Bubble is gonna interface with the WordPress site. So in this case, it makes perfect sense to leverage the WordPress's API, and you can do all of that using Bubble. So you can essentially build build a tool that sits on top of another tool like WordPress, or you know thousands or even millions of other tools out there that expose their APIs, and you can do all of that through Bubble. Now, what I like about Bubble is that it not only allows you to get this data, you can actually send this data. So if you have a workflow that where, where something happens, you can actually go out and send this data. So for instance, if you go into plugins, I have here one API call, and this is Airstrap, and I can charge payment. And the reason I have one API call is I haven't exposed more API. So if I expose an API, an action type of an API, an API where I'm not getting data, it's gonna appear here and I can connect it to the workflow, making it very, very powerful to do pretty much anything that I want, okay? The next point why these tools can pretty much do anything that you, then you can do via programming is because of plugins, okay? You can go out and you can add an existing plugin or you can even write a new plugin that extends some kind of functionality. And these plugins can pretty much be anything from workflow-based plugins to element to UI-based plugins to pretty much anything in between. So if you take a look, if you go into plugins tab here and you click on add plugins, you can see the type of plug plugins you can add. You can also sell plugins. So there's a, a bar code generator, there's A plus onboarding. And the way I like to look at plugins is essentially this is where the code, the actual code meets the actual capability of this app. So if you're using this app and let's say you are doing some kind of design here, and you realize you don't have maybe a visual elements that does email validation, okay? Maybe even a third party service. Well, you can go out and you can write this plugin and add it to your app as a visual element because it has a lot of, it has a dynamic resize elements, okay? It has uh, lots of existing elements that you can model after, okay? So there's a lot, a lot of possibilities. Look at this one, exposes any day of the week as a date value. Place the element on the page and simply reference any of the element's day variables to return the correct date, available states, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're using an app like Bubble and you realize, okay, I need some kind of custom functionality for my text input field, or I need some kind of a special button that does something, or I need a button that creates CSV, and while you can you can do all of that, if it's uh, workflow based, you can send it to an external API. But what if you don't want to, you know, access an external API? You can always create an inside plugin that's being used by Bubble internally without making calls outside. And this is especially 
applicable when you're talking something about like math.js. And so you have math.js is a simple API call to math.js to calculate an expression, but you also have a local math.js. So this is all JavaScript code that's stored locally without making external calls. So this is very useful. And so you have a plugin for that, that essentially uh, you insert the field and then that field can calculate all kinds of values, all kinds of data, making it very powerful and very extensible. And last but not least, when it comes to these kinds of no-code tools, where they really excel in my opinion, and I wouldn't rate this as the biggest benefit and not the, the smallest benefit. This is, you know, this is just another really useful benefit. And that is it allows you to scale with robust hosted infrastructure. And so you never have to worry about, you know, extending your infrastructure, you know, spinning up another virtual machine or adding more RAM to the virtual machine or going out and getting more disk because this service will do it for you. It's especially useful in that respect. And so, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I had to go out and learn system administration. I had to go out and understand, you know, the, the how does RAM work and this and all of that. But if I had to do it over, I really wouldn't want to, you know, concern myself with, with all of this stuff. Because while I'm learning all this uh, system administration stuff, I'm not focusing my time and, and attention on the actual app development. Because at the end of the day, if you're a software developer, if you have to build this app, you should not really concern yourself with all of this extra stuff. It's not very helpful because, you know, for instance, if you're working in, in a company, they typically have a server administration staff or an IT support or an IT team that actually goes out and does all of this for you. But when you're building your own app, you have to worry about it. You know, is this, is eight gigs of RAM gonna be enough? Do I need to get more RAM? How much this do I need? Is 20 gigs this space gonna be enough? Do I need a 40 gig this space? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very, very painful to deal with it. And that's why apps such as this one, they allow you to build an app and never worry about all of these internals, all of these, whether the app is going to scale, whether it's going to spawn enough threads, where, wh whether the, the container is going to have access to enough memory, all of these things you never have to worry about when you're using a tool like this. So when you combine things like AI, uh, things like design, things like creating a workflow, things like having the plugins that extend all kinds of functionality, things such as the REST APIs, and last but not least, the whole you know, manage services framework where it essentially does exactly what you needed to do, where you never have to worry about whether you have enough resources or not. You have an amazing product that pretty much does 95% of what you can do with code. Now, possibly there could be some edge cases that are difficult to do inside of this, but actually having thought about it for, for a little bit, I haven't really come up with any convincing arguments that you shouldn't really be using this tool and this tool should not uh, solve the majority of the problems that you're facing and create a lot of these interesting solutions for any kind of products out. And so now that I'm aware of all this uh, functionality, I'm more confident building apps for a service such as Bubble or other no-code apps simply because it pretty much abstracts all the low-level stuff, all the code, all the bug hunting, and all of that stuff, and makes and and gets you to focus on what's important: the code and actual the functionality of the app. All right, guys. So if you're going out and you have any doubts whether tools like this, where the no code is a fad, or maybe it's gonna pass away, or maybe it's gonna stop being interesting, people are gonna go back to coding. You can rest assured that this is simply the next evolution of design the next evolution of development, and it's definitely here to stay. All right, guys, so do not be afraid to go out and build your, uh, whether they're hobby apps or mission-critical apps using tools like this. And definitely check out the rest of my videos on this channel where I show you exactly how to build specific apps that do exactly what you want using a tool such as Bubble IO and other tools as well. So I really hope you found this video useful. I really hope you've gotten value here. If you did enjoy it, leave a comment below, like this video, and definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because on this channel, we are only talking about the no-code stuff. And this means anybody can come in and build a simple app or a sophisticated app that does exactly what you wanted to do without any kind of previous 
software engineering training. All right, guys. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next 